Hey everyone, it's post processing this week and we're looking at how you can edit infrared photography. So in last week's video, I was out and about with a filter capturing some infrared photography. And if you haven't seen that one, I'll put a link up top so you can go back and watch it if you like. And this week I thought it'd be good to talk about how I edited those images and converted them from the black and red look that you get in camera and you will need a filter or a converted infrared camera for that into something that's more recognisable as the typical infrared look which is perhaps blue sky, bright white foliage and a little touch of pink but it's important to point out that there are no rules with this you don't have to be bound by that particular look it's just a look that I quite like and it's quite common but there's so much room for experimentation with infrared and you can get so many different colours so really just go out there and, and experiment. And the other thing to say is that this is just my approach from the research that I did and the experiments I made. This is just what worked best for me. But if you've got a different approach or another preference, then why not leave a comment below and let us know what works best for you. So I'm going to hand over to myself now and we'll talk about how to convert these images. OK, so this is the image we're going to work on. I was fairly pleased with this shot. I quite like how we've got the bright foliage of the tree contrasting against the dark backdrop of the sky. I could have improved the composition slightly. If I'd have got a little bit lower, it would have helped to stop this focal tree intersecting with the background trees. But I couldn't really get my tripod any lower. And to be honest, I was concentrating more on the exposure with the infrared filter. So. Anyway, we're not really talking about composition right now. We're just going to talk about how we're going to convert this image. So this is the raw file straight out of the camera. It's got that red pink look that you get from an infrared filter. And what we're going to do is convert this. So it's got that more stereotypical look that you would associate with an infrared image. So the first thing we're going to do is alter the white balance. Now, I wouldn't set this in camera. I don't tend to set white balance in camera anyway because I just adjust it later in Lightroom. I find that much easier. But particularly with the filter, that really throws off the white balance in the camera, so definitely better to adjust the white balance later. But what we want to do is make the white balance much cooler, basically. And to stop that getting oversaturated, we need to bring the tint down as well. So the goal here is to get some nice cool bluish white tones in the foliage and grass but retain a little bit of pinky purple in the sky. I can come back to my white balance later. What I'm going to do now is just adjust the tone a little bit because this will affect the white, how the white balance changes the image basically. I'm going to bring the contrast up, I think, a little bit. I'm going to bring my highlights down quite a lot. And I'm going to bring the blacks down. I'm starting to bring a bit more contrast back into the image. And I can also bring some contrast in using dehaze. So that will add contrast and saturation. And I can also add a bit of saturation with the vibrance slider. OK, I'm going to boost my shadows a bit to get a bit more detail in there. And I'm going to boost the whites as well. So you see now we're starting to get a bit more colour into the image. And if I tweak my white balance now, we should start to see more of those purples coming in in the sky. There we go, start to come in now. Let's bring down the tint slightly. That's starting to look good, I think, now. I can bring the shadows up a bit. And I think we're more or less there now with the white balance and tone. All I'm going to do now before I bring this into Photoshop is get rid of the vignette that we've got in the image. So I think this was caused by the filter. And because it's infrared, rather than visible light, 
it's created a bright vignette rather than a dark one. But we can get rid of that if I just come down to the lens corrections panel here. Under vignetting, I can bring this slider down. You see that's starting to get rid of the vignette now. I find it easier to look at the thumbnail up here in the navigator rather than the large image. And that's getting rid of it, but we've still got a slight ring here. So what I'm going to need to do is bring down the midpoint. Probably bring the amount back up now. I'm going to bring the midpoint all the way down. And probably around about there. So if we just turn that off, you can see that's done quite a good job of getting rid of that vignette. So this is ready to bring into Photoshop now. I'm pressing Command and E on my keyboard. If you're on a PC, you can press Control and E. And once that's thought about it, it should open up Photoshop and we can work on our image in there. So here we go. Now what we want to do is because we've got this pinky blue purplish sky and we've got some bluish white tones in the foliage, what we want to do is swap those around so that we've got more of a blue sky and a bit of pink in the trees and grass. So we're going to go to the adjustments palette here and we're going to select channel mixer. Now you can do this by just going up to the top under adjustments and down to channel mixer which is greyed out because we're on the we're on the adjustment layer at the moment but if you were on your normal layer you'd be able to select channel mixer and do all the things that I'm about to do directly onto the layer. The downside of that is that if you save your file close the application and then come back to it later, you can't reverse those changes. So they'll be baked in basically. By using an adjustment layer, you can turn those effects on and off. So you've got much more control and you're working in a non-destructive way basically. So what we want to do is with the output channel set to red, we basically want to swap around the red and blue slider values. So we're going to set red to zero and blue to 100. And then if we go to the blue output channel, we'll do the opposite. We'll set red to 100 and blue to zero. So that's changed it quite a lot, but we're still not quite there yet. If I go back to the red channel and come down to contrast, I can start to tweak that. And you see we're getting more of a white effect in the green areas, the trees and the grass. And with the blue output channel selected, I tweak that as well. And basically it just takes a little bit of tweak in between these two until you get the effect that you want. And it's all down to personal preference really. You need to play with these until you get it just how you like. And you can also adjust the channels themselves, the red and blue. You can get some different colours in there if you if you really tweak them. But I want to stick to what I had before with 100 set in there. And I just want to adjust the contrast. Now what I have noticed is there are some artefacts in this image here for example. I think this must be dust specks on the sensor. Uh, but because it's infrared, they must have gone bright white like this. So I'm just going to get rid of these by using the healing brush tool. So if we click on this one here, click and hold, pop out the contextual menu, and then healing brush is the second one down. I'm going to press Alt on my keyboard. I can select another area of my image, and then I can just start to paint over where the dust specks were and that just kind of clones the area that I selected while holding alt and starts to paint over that area. So we've also got the moon here which would have been quite cool apart from you can't really tell where it is so I'm also going to get rid of that like so. 
There's another spot just down here. So I press Alt, get rid of that. Another one here. One just up here. And here. And I realised I had so much dust on my sensor. It's going to have to have a clean, I think. Okay. So, if I click save, command and S, or control and S, if you're on a PC, that's just going to start saving the file. And then when I close this, it'll bring me back into Lightroom and I can make some final tweaks to this image. Okay, so now we're back in Lightroom. What I'm going to do now is just get rid of a little bit of noise. This image wasn't too bad, it was taken at ISO 640. Some of the others were at ISO 1600 and they did have some significant grain in them. And even though this one's not too bad, I am just going to bring up the luminance slider here under noise reduction to about 20, just to soften that noise. And the image has got a little bit of motion blur in it, well quite a lot of motion blur really, because it was such a long exposure time and it was a little bit breezy. So I'm not really too worried about softening the image because we've already got softness there anyway. And I think that's not too bad. I quite like this look. There's a little bit of blue just down here in the sky. And we've got some pink in that foliage and grass. But what I want to do now is just make a black and white conversion out of this. So I'm just going to click black and white up here. And... There's not too much to do to this now. I can tweak the mix under the black and white palette. Maybe bring up a little bit of brightness in the blue area. And maybe bring down the pink slightly, or the magenta. And I might just put a little bit more punch into it by bringing up the clarity. I don't like to put too much clarity into my colour images but black and white copes are much better when you increase that sharpness with the texture and clarity sliders. And I could even add a little bit more vignette just to darken up the bottom of the image there where the grass is. And there we go, I think that's the final image. So there you go, that's how I converted my infrared images. As I said in last week's video, it's really good fun, so I do encourage you to go out and try some infrared photography. And that's about it for this week's video. I hope you found it useful. If you have, give me a thumbs up just down below. And as I always say, if you're new to the channel and you're not yet subscribed and you'd like to do so, you can also click down there on the big red button or over here on my face. That way you'll keep up to date with everything I'm doing each and every week there's a new video every Sunday morning, 10 a.m. UK time. So I hope you'll catch me next week for the next one. And until then, thanks a lot, everyone, and bye for now.